This past summer, the remains of St. Nicholas of Bari left Italy for the first time and spent two months in Russia. There, two million people venerated the relics. Some in the church wonder if the move is a sign of a thaw between Orthodox and Catholic churches, separated since the 11th century. But a full unification between both sides doesn't look like it's in the cards. A recent study by Pew Research found only 35 percent of Eastern Orthodox followers in Europe want to reunify with Catholics. Those 7 in 10 say they like the progress Pope Francis is making in the relations. For more analysis, we're joined now by Dr. Matthew Bunsen, an EWTN senior contributor. So, Matthew, why are Orthodox tr Christians seeming lukewarm on the reconciliation here? Yeah, well, the number that you cited, 35 percent, is even worse in the Russian Patriarchate of Moscow. Okay. That's 17 percent actually favor that. Now, that's significant because there are 100 million of the 260 million Orthodox in the world belong to that Patriarchate. So almost 40 percent are even lower than that. If we're looking for why, we have to look at theological, historical, and cultural reasons. Theologically, there are a lot of disputes that historically have been present in that relationship. We can look at the filioque, for example, the procession of the Holy Spirit, that was a, a controversy, as well as the big sticking point, which is papal primacy. Historically, you have a very long memory among the Orthodox for events like 1204 and the Fourth Crusade with the sacking of Constantinople mm -hmm. and the failure of reunion in 1274 and 1439. Sure, there are so many factors here. You also mentioned geography as one, mentioned Russia, for example. How does geography play into this? Because I'm guessing if you're closer like, to other parts of Europe, like Ukraine, they'll be a little more friendlier. Right. The fundamental reality is that 77 percent of the Orthodox in the world live in Central or Eastern Europe. Okay. That makes sense, again, historically, because the Orthodox faith spread so rapidly among the Slavic peoples and, of course, was an instrument of evangelization across the whole of Russia. The problem with that, then, is that you have a geographical isolation of the Russian Orthodox as well as the rest of the Orthodox communities, the autocephalous churches, as they're called. The Orthodox also, unlike the Protestants and Catholics, uh, did not embark upon a massive missionary endeavor uh, that we saw in the 17th, 18th, and, of course, into the 20th century. Sure. Like I said, so much history there. Is there any reason, though, even with that 35 percent that you saw, is there any reason to feel optimistic that there is reconciliation talks between Orthodox and Catholics? Yeah, very much so. Well, we have seen progress under the popes in recent decades from Paul VI forward and especially under Pope Francis. Pope Francis met in, in February 2016 with Patriarch Kirill of Moscow. That has opened the door for even more discussions between the Church and Russia. I point out especially the recent visit of Cardinal Pietro Parolin, the Vatican Secretary of State, to Vladimir Putin, opening again more dialogue. So both sides, the leadership of both groups, I think especially of ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, they want to have continuing dialogue. And Pope Francis is leading that charge. And I don't think it's something we can take for granted because that relationship between the leaders has gotten so good even with past, I mean, within this past decade, I should say. Matthew Bunsen, EWTN senior contributor, thanks so much for your analysis. Great to be with you.